No Aboriginal person I know is intact. Set in the early 60s in rural Australia, The White Girl by Tony Birch is the story of Aboriginal woman Odette Brown and her granddaughter Sissy, who she is raising, and the love and bond between the two of them. Birch's writing transports you back in time to 1960s Australia. He manages to capture a style of speech and subtlety of language no longer in fashion, used by my grandparents' generation. His meandering descriptions somehow have an efficiency to them, making them easy and nice to read. He soon appeared from behind the Dodge, walking a bicycle. The frame was painted red, and the wheels, which didn't quite match the size, had been scrubbed and oiled. The handlebar grips, made out of strips of leather from an old car seat, had been crafted by Henry himself. The basket on the handlebars barely resembled the wicker cray pot it had originally been, an item that had somehow travelled far from the sea to the junkyard. Henry bought the bicycle to a halt in front of Sissy. I place this book as conversational on the gunpowder fiction and plot readability scale. Birch's own ancestry is a testament to Australia's racist past. An Indigenous man with the Barbadian convict James Prince Mooney in his lineage, Birch's great-grandfather was an Afghan who had to seek an exemption from the 1901 Immigration Act better known as the white Australian policy before settling in Australia. It is, however, Australia's other famed institutionalised racist program, the Stolen Generation, which is of importance to the novel. You might think that Australia's policy on asylum seekers, which has been exported to some of the West's most cunty leaders, was our first foray into exporting racist policy. But no, we've been leading the world in treating our Indigenous people like shit since Captain Cook landed. We didn't even acknowledge that Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islanders predated European settlement into 2013. The Stolen Generation was exported to Canada under the name the 60s Scoop and to Argentina under the name the Dirty War. And various unnamed atrocities in China, New Zealand, the US, Norway, Spain, Switzerland, Ireland, East Germany and more. She was about to touch one of the large wooden wheels of the coach when a more sinister image flashed before her. A coach full of children being driven away from the mission, crying for their mothers. It is estimated that somewhere between 1 in 3 to 1 in 10 Indigenous children were taken from their parents and communities between 1905 and sometime in the 1970s. I say sometime in the 1970s because despite the policy ending in 1967, the practice did not. Uh, it continued well into the 70s and we don't know when it stopped being a thing. We also don't know how many Aboriginal children were taken from their homes. And that is partially because our censuses over the years have either not included Aboriginal people as part of the population or only included them as a percentage of a person. Now, if I can just stop ranting about how shit my country is for a moment and bring it back to the novel, one of the major sources of tension is Odette's very real worry and concern that the authorities will take Sissy away from her and home her with white parents. As the title implies, Sissy is a white girl. And this is one of the many things about Aboriginal culture that this book explores. Why is Odette Brown so much darker than her granddaughter? We can't put our faith in anyone but our own people. This book also explores the issue of trust. Many times a white person is trying to be helpful towards Odette. And she's wary of them and doesn't trust them, even though it would be in her best interest to go along. Well, when Jack, an Aboriginal man, offers her help, it's very different. The issue of trust and race is so linked in this country. What I need from you, the woman added, is your tribal name. Odette was puzzled. My tribal name? Yes, your tribal name of your ancestors, where your people originated from. Whenever I sell native artwork, I provide written providence with the greeting card, naming the tribe that the artist originates from. It adds to the value of the work, you see. She looked at the frowning Odette sympath sympathetically. Oh, I'm sorry. Perhaps you have lost all contact with... The woman blushed with embarrassment. 
It never failed to surprise Odette how white people were always going on about uplifting Aboriginal people, yet they would demand information about the old ways when it suited them. Prior to the European invasion, there were over 500 different Indigenous nations speaking over 250 different tongues. There were massive cultural differences between some of these people. They were very separate. The distance that some of these tribes covered was greater than the distance between Dublin in Ireland and Timbuktu in Mali. Birch is exploring how different mobs look after each other and how different nations have been erased and merged and how individual Aboriginal cultures have been stripped, going from 500 different identities to one. Dean carried the blood of so many Aboriginal people on his hands, it could never be scrubbed away, not from the man himself or the town that carried his name. The station records revealed that in the decades following the town's foundation, the blacks had been kept on a tight rein. The logbooks for the police cells indicated that a week rarely passed without an inmate from a nearby mission being locked up, from a period of 12 hours to several weeks and for matters including trespassing, drunkenness, absconding, and cohabiting with those of superior caste. I thought this book was wonderful, and it's a book I very much recommend if you're interested in how Australia's racist policies have affected Aboriginal life. It's a book that I think you should pick up. Birch says that the author and book that had the most influence over his work is Alexis Wright and her 2006 Miles Franklin award-winning novel, Carpenteria. And that's a book I hope to get to next month during Aussie April. Let me know if you've read The White Girl or if you're planning on picking it up. Very highly recommended. Bye.